I don't particularly do this often, uh, but today I weighed myself and I was 97 kilos. Last time I weighed myself was, I think I was 100 kilos. The heaviest I've seen myself was two months ago at 101 kilos. Four kilo weight loss in the space of, I want to say, two months. And none of these, none of these dates and figures are accurate, but it's around the time that I started working pull-ups, chin-ups, dips. That's, you know, that's when I started changing my body composition a little bit, I reckon. And the reason why I lost, lost all this weight is not because I'm doing something crazy. It's simply because I am doing more work. And the work that I'm doing is possible only because I'm just basically using my body weight. So I'm doing chin-ups and pull-ups, dips and push-ups, and I'm doing lunges. All of those movements are literally hundreds and hundreds of reps. And I think that, number one, is a lot of energy expenditure. And number two, uh, it's a lot of muscle damage. It's a lot of work and it takes a lot of energy to repair after the fact. So my workouts are taking a lot of energy and then there's a lot of energy required to repair post those sessions. Um, a lot of you guys were telling me, why don't you start adding weight to your dips? Like if you're doing a set of 30, you, you know, you're ready for more weight. Same with your pull-ups and chin-ups. Um, my thinking has been, yeah, sure, I can put more weight on, uh, but I want to get more work done. And, you know, I got to a point where I was 101 kilos and I wasn't feeling good. I wasn't happy, you know, how I was feeling, number one, and I wasn't happy how I was looking. Um, I don't want to be that guy that just changed, chases strength at all costs. I don't want to be that guy. Like, to me, I've never been impressed seeing somebody that is morbidly obese, lifting weights, and lifting world record weights. To me, that is literally one step forward, two steps back. The baseline for my existence in the gym at training is to be healthy. <laughs> that is the number one thing. And the most ironic thing for me is the pinnacle of bodybuilding and the pinnacle of powerlifting, maybe less so the pinnacle of uh, weightlifting, all of these things are super unhealthy. <laughs> You see a bodybuilder on stage, that guy's literally, you know, juggling death. Powerlifters, maybe they're using a little bit less drugs. But a lot of these guys, especially the, 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 the super heavyweights, they're so, so unhealthy, man. Like, you can't be healthy and being 150, 160 kilos, or whatever some of these guys are. So for me, I've never been attracted to that strength, 300 kilo squat. I need to get to 150 kilos body weight. That to me would literally be a depression session. If I go to 150 kilos and I reach my 300 kilo squat that way, number one, I could never go through that because health has to be number one. Like if you are trading your health points to get strength points, what are you doing, man? The, the reason why people start training is to get healthier, right? It's a healthy thing. So for me, I got to 101 kilos and I was like, I started feeling a bit sluggish. Um, just simply running around, I just, I just felt, you know, running after my kids, I just felt kind of off. I, I didn't like how I was looking. I didn't, not that I had like ambitions to be a freaking bodybuilder or whatever. Like I, I never liked in the last seven, eight years at least. I've never been really motivated to look at a mirror and just kind of do this stuff. I'll look at this and like look at my pecs and triceps. I don't know, like, it, don't get me wrong, like, it's nice to look good, uh, but when I think about bodybuilding, it's not just about looking good, it's about being shredded. It's about watching every single molecule that you put in your mouth from your plate. That, to me, kills your relationship with food, number one. You become socially excluded, like, you go out, oh, I can't eat that, my cars, you know, my macros. That, to me, is like, Man, what's the point of that? Like, if you go out on a social gathering, if you're with your family or whatever, like, I can't have a chip because of my macros. So, like, I don't like that relationship with food. Um, and I don't like the whole idea of my whole success of my training is based on the mirror or somebody looking at me. I don't like that. I've always been, for, for the last seven, eight years, since I got this bug at 25 about strength training, I've always kind of been performance orientated. I want to be able to deadlift, squat, bench press, overhead press, pull up, push up, 
really well. I want to be strong. I want that to be my metric. You know, objective, not subjective stuff. Oh, this guy has this. No, I don't want it to be a subjective, you know, feeling. You know, looking at a mirror day today, looking, you know, looking at the scale or whatever. That doesn't make me tick. It might make you tick and that's fine. We're all different. But my drive has always been performance. Now, in this chase for performance, for strength training, there is a tendency for you to kind of spill over a little bit. You know, you bulk up too much. Not that I've ever tried to bulk up or whatever. Like, it's never been like, okay, for the next few months, I'm just going to get fat. No, I, 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 that's never been my approach. Um, I understand you have to put on a little bit of weight and all that stuff, but it gets to a point where you just, you're eating and you, it's all fat, you know. Uh, but in the last, I want to say, four or five months ago, four, four or five months ago, something like that. Um, I felt like my volume of training went down. The weights that I was using was really, really high. And, uh, you know, I wasn't spending a lot of energy in the gym. Even though I was working so freaking hard, the central nervous system was getting absolutely smashed because I was always using heavy ass weight for super low volume. I basically wasn't using enough energy, yet my mental, you know, assessment of my training sessions was that I was wrecked. So in the last two months, what I've done is I've swapped those two parameters around. So I'm not using super heavy weight for everything I do. And I'm, I'm, most of my training is literally spent doing calisthenics now. So chin-ups, pull-ups, dips, push-ups, lunges. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of reps. And what do I see? I see four kilos of, of drop uh, purely because I'm expending more energy. That's all it is. I'm still using heavy weight for the squats. Still trying to use heavy weight for the deadlifts, although that's kind of dropped off a fair bit in terms of frequency. Um, but I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling lighter on my feet. I'm feeling fitter, more balanced. The lunges are making my hips more balanced. Definitely feel happier in my hips. Um, I feel like I've gained a bit of size. Looking at me, I feel a little bit more fuller. That, I haven't built muscle. Like when I think about building muscle, like I'm not thinking about, okay, Ivan's put on X amount of muscle or whatever. Even though I've dropped four kilos, I look bigger because I'm just, I've changed how I'm training. I'm doing more sarcoplasmic hypertrophy rather than always chasing my fibrilla uh, hypertrophy. So that's a distinction that's very, very important because that, you know, people think, oh, you know, all hypertrophy is the same. You need muscle, you need muscle. No, you need the right type of muscle, right? Doing sarcoplasmic, you know, pumping of muscle, you know, it's not the most beneficial way for you to get stronger. What you want is myofibrillar muscle, right? You hypertrophy. You want those fibers to get thicker, stronger, and multiply. That's what you need. Not just, you know, fluff. Um, now, whatever you do, any training that you do, like it's not one or the other. There's always a blend, but you can definitely load one particular hypertrophy more than the other type based on, you know, what you're doing with training. Now, with calisthenics, I'm doing freaking reps of 30, you know, 40, you know, push-ups, whatever, whatever I'm doing. That's a lot, a lot of repetitions and it's a lot of expenditure, which is why I'm doing it, you know, to look nicer, fuller, better, you know. Um, but you're not guaranteed you're going to get stronger on the bench press. So, so I've, I've gained a bit of shoulders and traps and, you know, my, my lats are bigger. That, that means my deadlifts are going to be bigger. No, necessarily. Be very, very careful of making that kind of distinction, making that connection, okay? My, my pull-ups have gone up, that means my deadlift is going to go up. Not necessarily, because you, you just might have gotten a bit more swollen in your lats, more glycogen storage in your lats, but glycogen is not going to contract. That's not contractile tissue. So this is where, you know, whatever, too much thinking, you know, all that stuff, but don't get me wrong, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is, 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 is good, um, and it, makes, you, it make, makes it easier for you to build my fibrilla down the track. This is the whole thing about periodization, right? You go from doing sets of 10 to doing sets of one in the space of 12 weeks. That's what you're doing. So you're starting with basically sarcoplasmic type of stuff, and then you, you know, trying to load a little bit more of the myofibrillar hypertrophy. That's what this is, um, in a sense. You need both, that, you know, because you, you see a lot of these weightlifters, you see me, right? For freaking year and a half at least, all I ever did was, I mean, predominantly. I also did in the first year, you know, some high rep squatting with the milk and squats program, but um, most of my training sessions have been, you know, race up to a single in the squat. And what do you see? You don't visually see any muscle being put on, but I was strong. 
So myofibrillar hypertrophy versus sarcoplasmic. But that same person, if I went back and I started doing sets of 20, you know, all of a sudden if I want to put on this muscle, it's not muscle, man. It's, it's just, you know, it's kind of like what creatine does. It, it makes you kind of swole in a way. But what's interesting with me in the last two months is that I've actually lost four kilos, but I look bigger. So it's interesting. It's the whole thing. Can you build muscle and lose fat at the same time? I don't know. It's, it's a difficult proposition. Um, I mean, without doing some sort of like empirical studies, you know, like some, I don't know, DEXA scans or whatever, like it's, it's impossible to know what happened with me, but it is very interesting that I've lost four kilos and I definitely look bigger to myself. Like I look fuller and whatever. So anyway, not that I care about the, 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 the scale because it's, what is what does the scale mean man like you know people people obsess about going up to the scale all the time and measuring themselves especially women you know trying to lose weight or even guys trying to lose weight it's always like oh i'm not losing weight or whatever i've started training but i'm not losing weight but i'm looking better but what's happening with the weight i don't understand but what, what's weight what, what is weight you know you've lost weight okay so like what have you lost have you lost fat have you lost fluid have you lost muscle have you lost bone density like what bit have you lost how do you know this is where it becomes like such a poor tool to use because it doesn't really tell you anything. Okay, I've lost weight. Is that a positive thing? Sometimes you gain weight and you look better. So what's happening there? You put on a little bit of muscle. That's why, you know, you're heavier. So, you know, if you're a girl trying to lose weight, that's a positive. You're not doing anything wrong. Continue what you're doing. No, 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 but the number says this. Screw the number. I've definitely put on a little bit of muscular definition, size. My belly feels smaller. My legs look bigger because of the lunges and the hypertrophy that, that I've been doing. My shoulders, my lats, my chest looks, everything looks bigger, yet I'm four kilos down. Is it four kilos of fat? I don't know. I don't know. All I know is I've done a lot more work per day than I have been previous of these two months. Um, and the interesting thing is, well, 12 minutes already. The interesting thing is, if you guys remember when I was doing the running, running was absolutely igniting my appetite. Like I was getting so freaking hungry after those runs that it was like literally uncomfortable to exist. Like I need to eat again, half an hour again, I'm hungry again, I'm hungry again, I'm hungry again. It's making me think if you wanna lose weight, stay the hell away from that steady state cardio. That's literally my existence, my, my experience with this. If you wanna lose weight, do more dips, do more push-ups, chin-ups, pull-ups, lunges, walking lunges, it's great. It's huge muscles being involved lunging around. When I do this stuff, I don't feel like a vacuum cleaner when it comes to food. I don't. I could be different to you, and that's fine. You know, we all need to find you know, what works, what doesn't. But that whole experience with running, man, like left me a, like, I don't know. I, I, I didn't like that, the whole hunger thing. Feeling like I just want to eat everything. You know, I, I, I spoke about this at the time. I, I didn't like how it felt. You know, and I reckon that period also made me put on weight. Think about that. I did cardio and I put on weight. The hell is going on? And I've started, I've stopped cardio because of the, the whole calf thing that I did. That was kind of the, the, the defining um, point in that. I started doing a lot of calisthenics. I look better. I look better. And I've lost weight. <laughs> I don't know, man. But it's a very, very unpopular opinion I get. You know, everyone out there is going to be like, no, 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 cardio is... Cardiovascular fitness is absolutely important for cardiac health, cardio respiratory health. That's why it's important. But using cardio to lose weight, at least in my, ex in my experience, I think is the biggest fallacy ever. Because the moment you stop doing that cardio, the moment you stop doing that cardio is when you stop burning that energy. The en energy expenditure stops as soon as you stop running. But with resistance training, you're burning calories while you're working out and you continue to burn the calories after the fact because you're repairing the damage you did to those muscle fibers and to everything else, right? 
your bone density is probably increasing because of the axial loading, all that stuff. So in my opinion, if you want to recomp, recomposition your figure, stay the way, stay away from cardio. Now, there's certain cardio that's obviously better than others, like, you know, doing 40-yard dashes or whatever, sprints, you know, heel sprints, all that kind of stuff. You know, like ATP, CP, energy system or lactic acid system, that's great cardio. But this shit where people go for like five-hour walks, man, like, I'll tell you something, man. There is this one girl, I don't know her. I don't know her. She goes to the two gyms that I go to um, at Dermot. Around the time that I was doing the cardio, like, you know, the, the stepper and, and, the, and the treadmill and whatever, what I was doing, I think that lasted like a month, month and a half. I think I was doing that before the calf injury. This girl, man, every single time I went to the gym, man, she was there. And she would literally, because, you know, I would do runs at the start of the session, then it runs at the end of the session. And sometimes my sessions were two hours, hour and a half, whatever. I'd go in, she's on treadmill. She's on the step. She's working hard. She's going crazy, man. She's just working so hard. I would go ahead, do my, you know, weight training, whatever. Come back to do my, you know, another, you know, 500 meter run or 1,000 meter run or whatever on the treadmill. She's still there. She's still freaking working hard on those treadmills. Still working hard on those steppers. And I don't mean to sound rude, but I've, like, I've, I've, I was paying close attention to, to her, not directly, but I was noticing her around that month and a half that I was training, but I've noticed her for like, since I went to Dermot, like I, I saw her initially and I've seen her now, her composition hasn't changed. Not one bit. She still looks, oh, I don't wanna be rude, man. She still kind of looks, not that I'm a fan of seeing females that are freaking rakes. That's not my style. I like, you know, girls that have bum and, you know, thighs and all that. That's that's what I like to see in a female. I don't like the supermodel look at all. That's not my style. Like, that's not my expectation. But she was a little bit kind of fuller, right? Let's just say that. And she's doing this cardio, and I'm thinking to myself, she's probably doing this cardio because she wants to lose fat, but she's not changed in the last year that I've been going to Derma. She hasn't changed a little bit. And I'm seeing her on those, on those steps, and I'm seeing on the treadmill, she's got the freaking treadmill all the way up. She's got the treadmill like quick, on the, the, the step is so quick. She's working so hard sweating she's got a towel she's dripping nothing and i, th I started thinking to myself and I'm, I'm telling my wife as well she started going to the gym in the last few months as well and i'm like man like if you, if you do like too much cardio man you're gonna come home and you're gonna want to eat everything you're gonna want to eat me and the kids and everyone everything in the fridge you know so i'm thinking about that girl i'm like she's working so hard but then she probably comes home and she's so much hunger you know it's like mental warfare for you to stay hungry all the time I just think to myself, I reckon she would have 10 times the results if she never did a damn step on the treadmill or the stepper and she just did hardcore, you know, shit ton of volume of lunges, dips, even if it's assisted dips, assisted pull-ups, you know, just weights, whatever the case might be, just some sort of resistant training. I reckon she would have a lot better results. That's just my, I mean, I, I wish I could get involved and, and you know, take her under my wing and instruct her and whatever. I, I reckon you build a better body because then you have more tone. Your muscle has more tone if you, if you train with resistance. Um, you look better because think about what people look like that, that are super, super fit in terms of long distance running or, or whatever, long distance swimming, maybe not swimming, but anything that's like super, super long, long term, like hour long kind of sessions of uh, cardio. These people end up looking skinny fat. Let's be honest here, they look skinny fat. There's no muscle mass. Why would you want to, why would running build muscle? Like marathon running. It's not going to build muscle. When you see some of these guys that are top marathon runners, they're super skinny. They have no fat on them. They kind of look all right. They just look really, really skinny. But these guys that are holding a little bit of fat and are trying to do a little cardio, they end up looking skinny fat because there's no muscle. There's, there's, no, there's no muscle mass. There's no muscle tone. They've got those like, Wings, whatever the girls, you know, say at work all the time. How, Ivan, how do I get rid of the wings? You know, I'm doing cardio, this, that, the other. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's so frustrating. I, I feel like everyone's misled. I mean, I started doing cardio, I started running, not because of weight loss. I started running because I wanted my whole lower leg to get stronger. The soles, the Achilles, you know, the, the gastrocnemius. I wanted that to get stronger so I'd get more dorsiflexion and whatever. Hip flexors are working as well. So... I was, you know, going from a strength perspective of, of the musculature underneath the knee. That wasn't my goal to lose fat. But it was kind of like a side, 
effect that I've noticed with, with cardio versus resistance training when it comes to, you know, recomping. And I literally, it makes me feel sad for people out there that are working so hard and getting nothing in return. Um, if you're out there and you're thinking to yourself, I want to recomposition, my friend, if this has worked for me, it has to work for you as well, man. Just do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of reps of bodyweight stuff. That's it. Lunges, everybody can do lunge. If you've got short knees, do reverse lunges. Reverse lunges, and if you can do 10 push-ups, man, whatever, you're, you're ready. If you can do five pull-ups, you're ready. Just do, you know, a lot of that. You don't need to go to, you need to pay anybody anything. You can just do that yourself. So, yes, so today, I'll tell you what I did today. I did supersetting. I did dips, uh, 20 down dips, and then 10 down on the chin-ups. So, you know, set of 20, set of 10, set of 19, set of 9, set of 18, set of 8. Back and forth between dips and, 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 and chin-ups. The whole thing took me, I think, an hour or something. Shit ton of work, shit ton of reps. I don't even know what 20 down is. I have to, you know, check in the calculator to see. But that's a lot, a lot of work and a lot of damage. And so when I go to eat now and go to sleep, my body's going to be actively burning the calories still because there's a whole bunch of damage in the body. But when you're doing cardio, there's no damage. There's no range of motion in any of your joints. It's all very minimal. There's no eccentric loading at all. And it's uh, not beneficial at all. Because the moment you stop running, the calorie expenditure stops. But with the resistance training, it continues to go because of the repair requirement. Anyway, I'm talking in circles now, but this damn fly was going to my freaking ear. Um, anyway, I've lost four kilos. I'm not interested in bodybuilding, but I don't want to be fat. I want to be strong and I want to be in nice shape. That's my vision. Um, no, I'm not a bodybuilder. I'm still strength training. But again, I don't want to hold a lot of fat. I want to be healthy. You know, central obesity. The video was so long you cut out. But anyway, I'll, I'll you know, finish up uh, the video here. I just wanted to say, if you guys didn't know, central obesity is very, very closely linked to cardiovascular disease, especially in men. So if you're holding a lot of central fat, you know, like your gut is just sticking out, the beer gut, it's very closely linked to heart attacks, you know, acute coronary syndrome, that kind of stuff, right? It's very, very bad news. So I'm 34 now, I'm going to be like 10 days or something, whatever um, you know, I'm 34, my probably metabolic rate is probably slowing down, let's say it should, and by the way, metabolic rate, you know, the amount of energy you, you burn simply sleeping and walking around like doing nothing, your base metabolic rate is directly related to your lean body, uh, body mass, so your muscle mass. So the more muscle mass you have, this is another thing about freaking cardio, man. I'm going to war on cardio. The more muscle mass you have, the higher your metabolic rate is your basal metabolic rate. The higher your basal metabolic rate is, the more energy you burn just simply moving around. And now people are gonna say, oh, but you spend a lot of energy doing cardio. Doing cardio, your training session, which is one hour out of the 24 hours in a day, is literally like 5% of your daily expenditure, right? No matter how hard you train, you can't train more than two hours hard, whatever, let's say two hours. It makes up a very, very small amount of energy expenditure. So, if you can increase your base, basal metabolic rate just a little bit, you're going to be burning a lot more energy simply just by existing. So, doesn't that make sense to look into increasing your lean muscle mass? Because that's going to increase your metabolic rate. It's going to mean you can burn more energy. So, if you're interested in, uh, interested in uh, losing body fat, your number one thing should be to lose or to gain muscle mass. That's going to make you lose body fat. So, resistant training is going to fight that central obesity, which is going to make your heart healthier. Isn't that interesting? And I would even say, it's probably going to make it even more healthier than running. And everyone says cardio, cardiovascular, is really, really good for the heart. Yes, it is. But central obesity is also not very good. So, if you're thinking about it for, for every unit of time, what's most beneficial for your heart? I would say resistant training. Because it's going to increase your basal metabolic rate and it's going to be less likely for you to accumulate body fat. Isn't that interesting? Now, cardiovascular health is also very important. You, 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 you want to have a lower resting heart rate, all that other stuff. That's fine. But to do cardio to lose body weight, to lose fat, I think you could probably spend your time a little bit better than that. I've lost four kilos and I've run zero kilometers. I've done no cardio and I've lost four kilos. Not even wanting to lose four kilos. Think about that. Calisthenics is freaking amazing. 
body weight stuff is freaking cancel your gym membership and just pick up a, a two by two space wherever you are and you can do everything you need to do to recomposition your body that's it that's literally it um that's it that's all i got freaking long video guys sorry about this but i'll catch you in the next one peace out